Hi, I'm Chris Nesbitt. I've been a long time video game player and graphic designer as well. Mostly play on PC, though I have also rocked a console every now and again. My earliest video game memory have to be around about 1993. That year, the groundbreaking game of Mist had just come out, published by Cyan. My older brother had brought home a copy that his friend had bought, and we came home and played it on my dad's Mac 2FX. Best video game memory that I have had with my family would have been between me, my sister, and my brother. We would often have like one or two games that we would play, and we would check on each other, see how far we got with each of these games, which level we've gotten to, how much ammo we've collected, puzzle games, seeing how far we've gotten, what our solutions were, and we would often go back and forth like that. Favorite childhood video game was a video game series that came out exclusively for the Mac. It was called Marathon, made by Bungie Studios, the same folks that gave us Halo several years later. The thing I loved most about it, it wasn't just that it was a shooter game, but you also had to solve puzzles within the game to move to another part of a level or to the next level in the game. And the storyline to it also was, even for a game of that time, was phenomenal. Favorite game system would definitely have to be the PC. Granted that at Coming from my experience as a graphic designer and digital artist, that PC more often than not tended to be a Mac, and Mac has not always had the privilege of being a gamer's go-to platform. The Mac has actually seen uh, an uptake of gameplay and game titles available to it over the years. The best character ever designed would have to be the security officer from Marathon, who would later evolve into John 117 of the Halo series. You could put yourself into this person's shoes, be that hero, and not just be the dumb gunslinger that some other games maybe would be known for, but you also had to be a problem solver as well as a quick shot. Video game characters that I would most identify with Again, I mentioned the security officer from Marathon, John 117. He had to be a good problem solver as well as a quick shot, but at the same time, other games that I have played, such as the Homeworld series or the Myst series, uh, where you played more of a nameless character, those ones I also identified with due to my own fondness for solving puzzles, for thinking big picture strategically, you're always trying to think several steps ahead, so I identified with that as much as I would with John 117 or the security officer from Marathon. What video games mean to me, it's the ability to explore. It is the ability to do all the things in an alternate world that we could never really do in life or that we wouldn't really be successful at. To essentially be the badass we've always wanted to be whether that's in problem solving, whether that's in strategic gaming, whether that's the hack and slash game, shooters, what have you. And that open worldness is an exceptional reason why I keep playing video games. It's to explore, it's to see and do things that we just can't. Video games that I would recommend to people uh, it really depends on personality, what a uh, person would fit into, what they're looking for. Uh, I've always been more of a fan of the older games, at least the first two games of the, the Myst series, and one of Cyan's latest projects, the game of Obsidian. Again, for recommending games, it really does depend on the personality of whoever it is I'm recommending a game to. Yes. To an extent, I do believe that more people are getting into games now because of how widespread owning a computer is, or owning a tablet, or handheld, or console, anything. It has actually seen an uptake, and that's why I believe that games have become part of the mainstream vernacular. 
One of the best experiences that I have had with playing video games would be finally solving one of the most ridiculously difficult puzzle games that I've ever had to play, and that was uh, Cyan's second entry into the Myth series called Riven. That was such a ridiculously hard game to advance through, and to finally get it, that was a real joy. One of the worst video game experiences that I've ever had would be playing net matches of Marathon and Halo. They both take the limelight for this. Where the only weapons really available or seriously used were rockets. Oddly enough, uh, I ended up placing first in one of these games, but yeah, I've always had a problem with people that have insisted on heavy rocket use. It's just, you don't need skill for that, and I've always been one to enjoy putting a little skill onto my gameplay. Top three video game characters. I've already given Bungie its fair share, so no surprise that I'm gonna include them in the list. Of course, Mario. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure who I'd pick for a third, to be honest with you. The best way to share a video game experience. Bring people over, sit down and play. I know that there is a certain competitivity to playing a game, you know, you always want to, you know, like, especially with the shooter games and what have you, is you always want to win that match, you always want to place top on that, leader, uh, on that leaderboard and all that, but that can be a very good thing, that's what brings people out, and at the same time, uh, I've seen games where the whole purpose of, say, a particular map made for a game would be to just walk around and explore, to role play, to bring out that character that you've always wanted to be but just aren't in life. That all is worth sharing, whether it's being competitive or whether it's just getting out and making new friends or whether it's exploring as, uh, it, as you have an alternate life. Get out and share it. That is worth the share. Best video game series of all time. Other than the ones that I've already mentioned, I would have to say would be the Homeworld series. Gorgeous cinematics. Uh, you could really play these games and believe that you are in this environment and that you are really going through what the characters are. One of the biggest video game revolutions. I, I would have to say that content delivery would of course be a major revolution and the ability to play these games without having to shell out tremendous amounts of money to get new devices and all that but also in terms of game content i would say the whole run of gameplay has been a revolution in itself favorite thing to play video games on lately i've kind of become attached to playing them on my phone the little games that they have there but the best thing absolutely to play them on is a pc you have all the computing resources you can need these systems are designed not only to play the games but to do some of the heavier lifting stuff that I would be accustomed to such as rendering graphics, finalizing video, or even some scientific computation that I would occasionally do from time to time to help out our science community. To suggest video games to people, I would say yes. A large part of the reason why I would do this is because Video games have become kind of the literature of our times. Still a big fan of reading books to see how some game, uh, game companies might be able to turn some of those into games, some books into games, just as we've done books to movies or what have you. A lot of the things that I've mentioned earlier are reasons why I would think that games should be shared by everyone. Uh, again, it's the chance to explore, it's the chance to get out and interact with people, especially that it is now largely an online experience that is going to be shared. Being part of a story instead of just run, shoot, run, shoot. Yes, at times it's going to be escapism, but the big thing too is that like problem solving, like actually having uh, meetings at work or whatever, you might actually come up with something, a solution to a problem in a game that you might think, hey, this might actually work and actually be creative with it instead of just doing something.